let it settle back down, going right down to the depth of the hook. should be on the end of the fly line jumping. Well, this looks very nice. Another new venue for me, Watermark Fisheries in the Cotswolds. Been walking around, uh, there's a little bit of ripple on the water, which I do like. And most of the guys that are all here already are fishing sinking lines. But we've got some cloud cover and a slight ripple, and I can hear fish moving out there. So I've decided to stick with a floating line to start off with. Apparently this is a very, very deep fishery. Later on in the day, when the sun gets up, the fish will go down. And I might have to change to a sinking line myself. But until then, I like to make the most of it on the floater. Quite a basic setup today. I've gone for a long leader in case I have to search the depths, but basically it's one dropper and one point fly. So on my dropper, I've got a size 14 straight buzzer, just an ordinary little black buzzer. Have a look at that. There it is. And then on the point, to help everything turn over nicely, I've gone for a size 12, again in a black buzzer. So this gives me the option of covering a couple of different depths, a couple of different sizes, and it's a well-proven imitation, this. When I say imitation, it's not really that close an imitation, is it, when you think about it? I mean, buzzers, they're straight when they're just hanging. They do this when they're swimming. This isn't going to do that. It's going to be straight all the time. But it does have trigger points that the trout recognise. This one, you've got the little segments on the body, and this little orange flash here, which represents the wing case, because this is an imitation of the non-biting mid, Chironomid. Starts off life as a bloodworm, right down at the bottom, then becomes free swimming in this larval stage, and then finally hatches into the flies that we see going around. We call them buzzers, because when they get near our ear, we can hear the buzzing. Real buzzers have breather tubes front and bottom. This one doesn't. I like to think that the trout just sees certain trigger points. I mean, how realistic can we make a fly look? Let's face it, when was the last time you saw a fly with a lump of steel sticking out of its backside? It's more representative. If you've ever seen Tom and Jerry, you get the steak, T-bone steak. And it's that shape with fat all round it and a nice T in the middle. Have you ever seen one like that? But you know it's a T-bone steak because it's near a barbecue. That's where you expect to find food. I hope to present this at the right depth and then the trout hopefully will see it as food, being representative. So I'm gonna get started. Get that line at the end. Been very slow so far. Worked my way all around the lake and quite frankly I haven't had a pool. The banks are virtually lined now and there have just been two fish caught. So I've been able to glean a little bit of local knowledge. It turns out I wasn't too far off with my original assessment of buzzers, fished long leader and allowed to get deep. But probably I'm not getting deep enough. It's been recommended that a Montana works well. Now, well, I've got Montana, but it's not weighted, so it'll take a long time to get down. So I'm changing for this. It's, um, you might call it a tadpole, but because it's got the gold bead head, it will get down there. And that green collar, very similar to the Montana with the green thorax. Now the theory is you let it go as deep as possible, really give it a long time to sink, and then a quick retrieve off the bottom to induce a take. As it is, still got a bit of cloud over, but no fish moving on the surface. So I think this has got to be the way to go. 
size 12 buzzer still on the top, which I put on the top dropper, and I've lengthened my leader quite considerably. I'm probably using about 18 feet of leader here, so I should be able to get right down to where the fish are. I've been told to make it the longest cast as possible. It won't be terribly long with no wind to assist, but uh, let's give it a go. Local knowledge, sort me out. Just pause my retrieve, let those flies get right down to the bottom again. And then try a long pull for an induced take. Conditions look ideal. Ripple, nice bit of cloud cover. The only thing I can really put this down to is maybe this cloud cover shows a change in air pressure that's come through. And that could well be putting the fish off. Hopefully they'll get used to it this afternoon and wake up a bit more. I'm here at Watermark Fisheries with Adrian Davey, the proprietor. Hello, Adrian. Hello there. This is a beautiful looking fishery. It is. It's our, it's our jewel in the crown of Watermark Fisheries. Um, although trout fishing is not the most popular of um, the fishing disciplines that we have at the Watermark, um, we, we all love it and we preserve it um, because we have a very you know, deep passion for, for fly fishing. I'd say it adds Watermark Fisheries, so obviously you have I noticed you've got the river churn there, I'm not sure whether that's fish. But you've got coarse lakes as well? We've got coarse lakes, we've got the biggest day tickets carp fishery in the UK, um, wh where we have the British Carp Championships every year, the semi-finals. Um, we've got a carp lake just behind you that's, that's quite famous, it's Little Horseshoe, lo lots of carp to, to nearly £40. Pounds. Um, and we've got a range of you know, ponds, lakes, streams, all through, over about a thousand acres surrounding us, actually. Um, fabulous tench fishing. Fabulous pike fishing, so something for every season. Obviously the water is very clear, so it's spring fed as well, or is it just ordinary ground level it, water? It's, it's both, it's um, ground water and spring fed. You've got the river churn, you've got the leach, you've got the Ampley Brook. Um, the, the area has always been very, very good for trout fishing. Um, gravel ab abstraction and um, abstraction um, for drinking water has reduced the flow, so I'm glad to say a lot of, lot of, lot of the um, boreholes in the area have um, have, have been switched off recently. The Environment Agency have, have done that. And so we're seeing that, that the rivers and the streams and the ditches all fill up with brown trout again. So the brown trout are breeding naturally in the gym? They are, yeah, yeah, yeah. That shows yeah. good water quality, as good, you say. Very good water quality, and there's lots of lampreys, and you know, if you see species like dace as well, you, you, you know you've got the, um, the water quality, and the water quality is A-grade. Um, this trout lake is, is particularly good, it's quite deep. Um, but it's spring fed, there's, there's, there's flow all year round. What you'll find is the trout in this lake, the reason that trout fishing works so well on this lake is they go down deep. So if you, if, 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 if you fish with a high D line, I know people don't like to do it, mm -hmm. and a booby nymph, but it can be an olive one, so it can look like a damsel. Absolutely deadly from July onwards, absolutely deadly. I mean, we've got lots of double figure browns in the, in, in the lake, and most people actually are sort of fishing 10, 20 feet over their heads at times. I've noticed a few fish move this morning. It has been very slow for me so far, uh, but there are one or two fish that are taking nymphs just below the surface. So yep. I, think, I was thinking about sticking with that until it gets a little bit brighter. Do you think things should pick up towards the afternoon? Well, if, 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 if you're seeing fish moving, I mean, try a dry fly, um, and that, that's very, very effective, or dial back. Um, or, or buzzards, but my preferred method, um, because I know how, because I stock it, mm -hmm. you would take great pride in, in our stock fish, very, very fit fish, and they become naturalised very quickly, so they act naturally, they'll go down to the deeps, um, you know, in the warmer weather, long, long leader, um, something like a Montana or damsel nymph or a super glue buzzer in, in quite a large size fish on the longest lead you can get away with 14 foot really the longest cast that you can make let it get right down there count to 20 seconds at least one long pull it seems to activate the fish in, 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 into a lunge or to, to at least follow your flies and then figure of eight all the way back into the bank and, and it's so an absolutely deadly method you're actually causing an induced take. So exactly it's right. down in the feeding area, yep. as it comes up, looking as though it's going to the surface, it has a pop at it. Definitely. I mean, the fish are so focused on um, feeding on natural flies because of the damsels and the, the buzzes are alive with food, that you really have to sort of snap them out of that feeding approach that they've got to natural food. I would say uh, the 14 odd foot leader. What sort of depth is out there, say 20 yards? Um, the lake is, um, on average, probably 
12, 14, 15, 16 foot, but there's holes of 28 foot. So if that water's really, really cool, um, they will go and sit in that. And um, both ends of the lake have got deep water. That end of the lake at the top there um, is, is one side is very, very shallow, so very, very rich in food. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, if you can see over there, I don't know if you can see yes. the camera, yeah. where the picnic bench is, just off there, that, that's quite shallow, but it drops off into this corner just behind me to about 28 foot. So can you, you can imagine they've got the best of both worlds. They've got the cold water and they can move out to feed in the shallows and it's a fabulous place to fish. Marvellous, well, I've just seen the fish move out there in the ripple. Thank you very much for your time. I think I'll go and have a quick try for that one. Okay, thanks. Thought I'd cracked it just now. Uh, changed to a gold head buzzer on the point to try and get them down. And the only size I had on me was a 14, so it's slightly smaller than my dropper, but the gold head still gives it the weight to turn the line over. First cast, two little taps. Next cast, a pull, but how it didn't hook itself, I don't know. Next cast, another little tap, I thought, cracked it. That was 10 casts ago, and I haven't had another pull since. It's, uh, it's very, very hard. I'm really enjoying it still, it's a challenge. And uh, I'm still hopeful. I mean, the very fact that I have a few pulls on consecutive casts would suggest it was maybe a, a little pod of fish moving around. I was obviously finding the depth they were at and something that they were interested in. They'll be back round again later or another little pod will go by. So I'm gonna stick at it. Very tough today. I tried just about every fly in my box, I think. If I get a take now, I'll be surprised if I even hit it. Wait. Yes! At last, I've had a little take out of the blue. I don't think it's one of the monster fish that's in here by any means, but it's a fish. Let's get this line off of my, at my landing net and keep in contact with him. Finally on the buzzer, I think. We'll soon find out. You see I've got uh, at least nine foot to my top dropper there. And another nine underneath, shaking his head. And it's actually come to the only fly that I haven't tried yet today. There we go. It's on the buzzer. I've had a buzzer on all day and it's finally paid off. There. Come on, my beauty. Get that net wet. Put a gold head hair here on the point to help keep it all down. Oh, it doesn't want to play ball. Come on, don't shake that hook out now. Right in the top of the mouth. Let's give it some. Yes. Wade in. <laughs> I finally got one. Marvellous. Right. Come on, my beauty, let's get you up here. Last. And a good sized fish. Right, this is not a catch and release fishery. Uh, all fish to be caught, with the exception of browns maybe, are to be killed. Uh, it's a fishery policy. So here we go. Let's do that before I take the hook out. And another. Could this be the start of things to come? That one wasn't going to come off. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now, what I did was change to a team of flies. I had a team of three. Uh, say nine foot down to the top dropper, which was a dial back. Then another four and a half foot down to the buzzer, which is what this fish took. And then another four and a half foot down to a gold head hairs here to keep it all down. It's done the business. During the day, I've been watching a lot of fish jumping. And when they're jumping, they're not feeding. And I was thinking that they're trying to clean their gills out or uh, they're a little bit aggravated about something. And now I think I know what it is. A beautiful conditioned fish, but whether you can see that, look at the tail. These are all bloodsuckers. 
little blood sucking leeches. They'll be all over my hands in a minute. And obviously that's got to be very irritating for the trout, it itches. And he's jumping clear of the water and smashing his tail to try and loosen them off. And they're along the body, under the belly, both sides. You can probably see them better there, the little green specks. That's why they've been jumping. That's why they're not too happy today. This one's even less happy now because this one's going home with me. I think I've done enough here now. And uh, now that it's gone calm, flat calm, you can see every movement on the whole lake. Any fish that's feeding, jumping, whatever. And I can see over the far side there, it looks as though there are one or two fish moving relatively near the bank. Now I know it's a lot shallower over that way, but what Ripple there has been today has been pushing food over that way. So fingers crossed, I might find a few feeding fish there. I'm just gonna fish this cast out so I'm on my way round. Hello there. Hi there. All right. Not too bad. Not too bad. What sort of day are you having? Uh, not too good today, really. No. But, uh, no. I've had a couple of plucks, but that, that's it, really. It's. Uh, been struggling today. <laughs> oh, yeah. It has been hard, I know. I've yeah. really struggled just for the one fish. Yeah. What have you been getting your offers on? This um, little thing there, which is a bit, oh a bit, a bit like, a bit like a uh, a daddy, but sinks a bit. It's a, I, I would call it a rubber daddy. <laughs> Did you make this yourself? Not that one, no. What I thought I would take them on today was the the proper daddy, but if I've only got, I only brought a. A floaty line with me today, I didn't bring a sink to it. And I was hoping that I might get a few fish on that one. I'm still hopeful, I'm still hopeful. That's my favourite fish of all time. I've been fishing, fly fishing for 30 odd years, mm -hmm. and that's my favourite fly of all time. It's like, it's like his shapes and the legs go crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think maybe okay. if I do tie some of those, um, I, will probably, I would probably tie them with black legs. Mm. I think they might be a bit bit better. The yeah. only reason I dug this out, I've had these for quite some time and never used them, but I dug it out of the box because I wanted to try and get my fly down a bit, you know. Well I can still see a few fish moving over on that far yeah, bank near so the ripple, so I'm going to see if I can cover them. We've got a, got a little while We've got a little while yet. Well, before it gets dark we've got a while. <laughs> it might take that long. Yeah. Good luck to you. Tight lines. To you. Take Cheers care. Now. The wind's dropped completely. And so the fish that I've had the taps from have been a good way out. I mean, I'm probably having to hit 27, 28 yards, leave it to sink, then start the retrieve. And the little taps I was getting were coming within the first two or three yards. And without any breeze to assist me, it's gonna be difficult for me to maintain that distance, particularly with the length of leader I've got on. If I went for a short leader, I'd probably be all right. This could make things even harder. <laughs> gonna be good. So here's another angler has been wandering the bank, trying various areas, so I take it it's been a bit of a struggle. Yeah, it's been very difficult today, not fishing very well at all. Lots of fish there, but uh, you just don't seem to be able to catch them today. A bit frustrating, really. Yeah, so I noticed you say you've been wandering around. It's always a sure sign that things are difficult when people are wandering the banks. Yeah. What methods have you been trying? Uh, I've tried buzzers, I've tried daddy long legs, uh, sinking flies this morning with a booby, sinking line with a booby, but just can't seem to get them. They've been on top of the water really, haven't they? They've been jumping a lot, but couldn't get them with dry flies at all. Tried hoppers and everything really. Tried everything in the book today. But... It sounds virtually the same as my day. I yeah, mean, you've yeah. just described virtually everything that I've done as yeah, well. Yeah. And so I think the fish are a bit aggravated at the moment. They're not really feeding properly. No, no. Uh, probably because of the, the lights. I managed to get one earlier on that's got uh, quite a lot of blood suckers on it. Right. And I right. think that's what's putting them off. Yeah. But is this a usual venue of yours? No, it's the first time I've been. Uh, but uh, I should come again because it's a nice place and uh, as you say, there's lots of fish here, but they're just having an off day today. I thought they were aggravated as well. They're jumping right out of the water, yeah. which is always a sign they're not feeding, isn't it? That's right. It's difficult never... to catch. 
Well, thanks for sparing some time to talk to me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, I know that I'm not doing everything totally wrong because this gentleman's obviously been trying it as well. Yeah, well, you've done better than me today. You've caught one. That's Very better far. than I've done. Okay, thanks, right. nice right. to meet you. Take care. Yeah. See you again. See you again. Bye. Well, it's been very quiet and quite hard going today. Um, so I've got a bit of time. Now, unfortunately, today I haven't had a fish that's taken me right down to my backing. But if I had, I'd like to be confident that the knot that was joining my fly line to my backing was a good, solid one. My favourite knot is the nail knot, or sometimes called the needle knot. It can be used for backing to your fly line, or indeed for putting your leader line to your fly line. If you're going to use a leader line, it becomes a needle knot, because what you actually do is you get a needle, if you imagine this is the fly line, and you push the needle in to the end of the fly line and out through the side. Then heat the needle a little bit, that will keep the hole open within the middle of the fly line. Take the needle out, thread your nylon up through and out of the side of the fly, outside of the fly line. You can then start the needle or nail knot. You may want the needle when it's cooled down and lay it along the side of the fly line. Well, imagine there's a needle here. This is nice and stiff, so it should be quite simple for me to demonstrate the knot to you. So, there's my fly line, and we'll say this is my backing line. So I'm just going to lay it on the outside. Simply lay the line over what would be a nail, led along the side of your fly line. And then I'm going to wind this in a clockwise direction up the fly line and the nail. And this is what I need to do to get the material in the right place to form my knot in a moment. So I've given that about five or six wraps. I then take the end and I lay it along the nail. So the nail would be underneath these loops and that would be my bit of nylon tag end. And I hold that against the nail and the fly line. Now then, this is where these wraps come in. I now go back in an anti-clockwise direction and all these will unravel over the top of this. So around there, and I'm just gonna grip it and hold it. Nice close loops, grip and hold, grip and hold. And you will see now that I'm unraveling what I put around the fly line and the nail. There, there. So now I've got five nice loops along here. I pull my nylon to bring that down. And then I pull this end and I pull them both tightly together. There. And there it is. If that's attached to your fly line, now all you do is you trim off that end nice and close, trim that end off nice and close. It's good and tight. And that's a beautiful knot for your backing. One of the main advantages of it is that if you get a fish that takes you to the backing, that goes out through the tip ring, any other sort of knot tends to catch on your top eye as it's coming through. So if that's the eye of the fly rod, the knot comes out and catches. This one, what will happen is it will actually turn, there we are, and kick over and through the eye. There it is, nail knot or needle knot. certainly been a challenging day. I'm not the only one that hasn't been able to rise to the challenge. Uh, a lot of guys haven't been able to catch today. We don't exactly know why, weather conditions, whatever. It certainly can't be because of the number of fish. There are shed loads of fish out there. I just heard another one jump then. All right, I did manage to sneak one out. I kept my, stuck to my guns most of the way. I used the buzzer. But I started to lose faith after a while. I just wasn't getting any offers at all. So I did something I never normally do. I reached for the booby. If you see me going for a booby, you know it's really hard fishing. Not down to the fishery. Conditions, whatever, we don't really know. But it's a beautifully laid out fishery. Lovely clean banks, there are picnic tables all around. So if you want a beautiful day out in these, it's lovely surroundings here, and beautiful countryside all around, go to www.watermarkfisheries.com. You get all the information about their trout lakes and their course lakes, because of course they have excellent course fishing here as well. Book up with Adrian, give him a chat, come along. There are days and there are days. There are days for the angler and days for the fish. 
Today was the day for the fish, but another day will be a day for the angler, and that's when I'm going to be coming back.